Kriti, Joshua, welcome to the Startup Pod. Welcome, guys. Hey, guys. Loving, to hear, loving it already. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool having you guys in. How was Sage Summit going so far? Amazing. Awesome. I've never seen so many people in a single auditorium. <laughs> 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 yeah, we did a keynote this morning all about bots and artificial intelligence. And since then, everybody's just so curious. Yeah. And they think yeah. it's kind of like real now. That's a cool place for both of you to be because it's such a hot topic. Yeah, and huge this year. Everybody's talking about it. And it's not just like the pure tech heads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. So what's your involvement yeah. in it? So I'll go first. Yeah, um, go I have invented a title for myself. So I am the VP of Bots and Artificial Intelligence at Sage, which That's means a nice title. I know <laughs> probably the only person with that title at the moment in the world. Very cool. but it means I focus 100% um, of my time building robots, chatbots, artificial intelligence that do the boring, mundane tasks of running our business. Mm, okay. So nobody starts their business thinking, "Yay, I get to do expenses and invoices," <laughs> um, but we build. But we build bots that would love to do that and AI that automates so you can do whatever you love or watch Netflix. Very okay. cool. Yeah. We've seen um, all the peg demos and things like that. It's incredible. Yeah. Awesome. And peg over there behind us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so what, uh, tell us a bit about yourself and your background yeah. and what you do. So I'm the founder of the world's first chatbot lawyer. And I have the belief that so many lawyers are charging hundreds of dollars just for doing very little. Mm. So At least I, you're honest. Least yeah, you're honest. <laughs> it's true. I'm really not a fan of them, and they're not a fan of me. So, yeah. um, I, it started out with parking tickets, helping people automatically get out of their fines, and has since expanded to half a dozen areas of the law, including really serious issues like refugee asylum. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, and, and what made you come out? Obviously, you got a parking ticket, and you had to try and get out of it was that how it started <laughs> well that's a bit of an understatement I was a terrible driver I, <laughs> I um, so was it a speeding ticket <laughs> <laughs> it was a parking ticket but numerous um, parking tickets and after about the fourth ticket my parents told me I had to pay for my own fines and at that point out of necessity I had to become this expert at getting out of the tickets I wow. vowed to never drive with them together yeah. really, <laughs> really? That's, that, that's a crazy story yeah. yeah which is ironic because we're all in a van together but I know, oh, really? I know. Yeah. well if we get tickets here we know who to call yeah, yeah. exactly and, and what way did you get out of that one was it like a, a loophole or what way did you get out of the first one so I trawled through all of these documents to find the top 12 reasons why these tickets are dismissed. And my first one was there was a really small error on the sign, and that was a loophole that got the ticket completely thrown up. Wow. A small error on the sign? Yes. Um, right. It was um, they, one of the numbers was just completely covered. Yeah. Um, they pr probably the paint worn off or something like that, and um, invalidated the ticket. We were actually only talking about AI the other day, mm. and you know, when you mention AI to someone, yeah. they get scared. Yeah. You know, they're right. like, AI, it's taking over. But people don't realize how often they're actually using it without even knowing that they're using AI. That's yet. right. So, you know, whenever you search anything in Google and it pops up the next few words, or you talk to Alexa or yeah. Siri, that is AI in action already. Yeah. Um, there's um, a lot of public fear about AI. Thank you, Hollywood, for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in reality, AI can actually add a lot of value and, and make services accessible. Like, you wouldn't hire a lawyer to get out of your parking ticket. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're a small business, a freelancer, you may or may not have a dedicated person for your admin, your finances, like PAG. Mm. Um, so AI enables us to give access to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And now things like voice, if you can't read or if you have any issues with vision, yeah. you can just use your voice or you're driving around or your hands are full. Yeah. I think driverless cars are really exciting. Oh, oh yeah, um, huge, huge. It's going to make everything so cheap. Taxi rides everything. will be like almost free. Yeah. It's, it's really going to change up the industry as well. Like when something, like I know it's going to take time for it to completely expand, right? Mm -hmm. But like, is that taxi driver is gone because majority of people who get a taxi, if well, never mind if you're in a different country, but if you're out at night time, you, know, yeah. you can't drink and drive, yeah. so you're going to get a taxi. So with that, you can just get into a car, sit in the back seat, yeah. tell the car where you're going. Now you don't need a taxi anymore. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's so I just it could, I don't know about you guys, but I just felt like it come up so quick from like an idea and this may happen to yeah. all of a sudden Tesla's driving themselves. Yeah, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with specific areas of problems to solve. We talk about AI, just general purpose AI is going to take over, but yeah. we're, we're quite far away from that at the moment, yeah. maybe mm. 10, 15 years. But where AI is adding a lot of value is pro solving specific problems, like focusing on driving automation. Mm. 
and in your case legal services yeah. or what I build is this finan financial admin those kind of processes so if you solve a specific problem it's closer to us than we think what, what's the most exciting thing for you in AI um, for me I find accessibility so anyone can access these technologies whereas previously it was reserved for a certain few people yeah, and people that is with access to Watson <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people with access to IBM Watson yeah. <laughs> now anyone can build it so like Josh and I are using a bunch of these services to solve problems today and secondly I also think as humans we are getting more mature in how we interact with AI yeah. previously all you would do with Siri or Alexa is ask it out on a date and ask what is it wearing yeah. and now as humans we're will starting to see Alexa? yeah exactly yeah. Alexa <laughs> will you marry me um, not yet um, <laughs> not again I think <laughs> Yeah, but now we are, as humans, starting to realize the value of this technology and we're getting better at it. What do you think of people's thoughts, though, with, with AI always being on, like Alexa always listening? I think that's already the case when you yeah. your Uber app is always tracking you. Yes, so you might as yeah. well use it for good because it's all right, the technology is already there to track you, so you might as well make the most out of it and get all access to free services. Yeah, I'm most excited to see how it changes human interactions because mm. when smartphones came around, you would see people sitting around the dinner table and chatting with yeah. each other yeah. on text. Yeah. But um, voice is going to take it to a whole new level. Yeah. One of my favorite pieces of AI is um, you upload all of your messages and then it copies you. And there's been really heartfelt stories. It's a chatbot that m mimics like a person. That's right. And um, relatives have actually um, passed away. And then they can st still keep in contact with their dead relatives and kind oh of feel close God. to them through that, AI. That is incredible. Yeah, it's called Luca.ai. It's an incredible yeah, service. That's right. Yeah, that's those guys are awesome. They're doing yeah. some great stuff. Yeah. I don't know to be impressed by that or scared by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have another AI that I've built just for fun. It's called Kritibot. It goes to meetings on my behalf and I don't want to go. So <laughs> How does that work? So it goes to meetings and um, takes notes and listens in and when people need to ask me a question, they ask my bot. And believe it or not, guys, 80% of the time it's the same questions that people ask you in corporate meetings. Yeah. When is the next feature coming? Oh, okay, how much revenue? How many customers? What are our plans? It's like, you know, I, you don't need to talk to a human all of them. So you're telling me next year there's going to be two bots sitting here instead of myself instead, and Graham. <laughs> and instead of me and Josh. So. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. We're making the most of the video while we still can be on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, guys, look, yeah. we could actually sit here all day talking about yeah. bots and AI. Yeah. We absolutely love it. And it's so cool having you both in the startup house. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, right, guys. Thank, thank you so much. much for having us. Bye.